And what a bitchy! 2009 Volkswagen Golf. Uh, it's a Mark, latest of the Mark 5s. It's, it's the same for a Mark 6 and uh, a lot of the Volkswagen range. Rear calipers, seized piston. If you ever go to change the pads and one of these things and they're, they're you know, getting a bit old now, this car here is about 200,000 miles on. And yeah, the, you go to push the piston back in and it's very stiff and uh, it doesn't want to go back in on you. Well, you have to do a wee quick caliper refurb and I'm going to show you how to do that in the video. No real special tools and a few wee tricks of the trade. So I've just put the caliber back on again. There's, there's no pads in it. And uh, that's just to hold it for us in place. The problem that you're gonna have for these type is this wee, this wee line here. that goes between the, the flexible hose and, and the caliber itself. So that's, that's a steel pipe, but uh, the Volkswagen brake pipes are PVC covered and you can more or less see it there this is all this is all swelled here this pvc so this isn't going to break this isn't going to you know loosen off for us it's going to twist the pipe and you'll you'll rack the pipe you don't want to twist the pipe so it's it's this is the the take that the the brake hose here has uh like you know like barbs on it so it's it's stuck in there you could take that clip out but you, you want to just put that in place this is back on just to hold it I'm not really hanging it out. If if you go to spin the wheel, you know your car in the air, and it's it's very sticky. It's very tight to spin. Uh, the the you know this is this is a sure sign or it's indicative. Either your pads are are, are stuck in the carrier with if muck and rust and stuff, or you know the piston isn't isn't retracting uh, itself very easily. So that's a, another sign that uh, it's it's the piston seized on you. And when you go to change the pads. You can't push it back in again. So anyway, I'm going to show you what you need to do with this. This is uh, a problem. Normally, and you can see there. Hopefully, you can see. Get you into focus. That it's all sort of swelled up a wee bit. So what we do is we need to melt this PVC. So and you need to be very very careful and uh, just a small flame on it and a wee bit of patience and you'll get this you know so we'll put a, a flare nut type wrench on it this is 11 mil and we can see whether you can see that or not that the pipe is going to twist on us so that's no good so we need to sort sort this uh this swollen pvc out here Okay, very, very light flame on it. And uh, there's a lot of plastic about the place, the handbrake cable, the brake hose itself. And And there we go, that's it. Sorted. And um, we need to clamp this brake hose before we go any further. Okay, remove the clip. And um, we're going to take that off now. That's going to come nicely for us. And we'll put a gobstopper in the brake hose 
Let me go. Saturday anyway. Other oh, a thirteen mil spanner. You can't see it. It's on the uh, handbrake linkage, and as you can see, I can pull it back, and I'll release that. And a wee bit of panther juice around there. And there's a couple of wee clips there that you need to squeeze. And sometimes you can get this with your, with your fingers, just. Oh, that's quite tight. So there's a wee clip at the top and a wee clip at the bottom. You just need to get a wee squeeze with a uh, long nose pliers or something. And you get that out. That's us now. Uh, we'll be able to take these. 13's back off again, and that's our, our caliper free. So here we go. Caliper's out, caliper's on the bench. Now, we're going to do a quick sort of refurb on this. Now, normally you don't need any tools. Well, I'm going to show you a wee special tool that you can make yourself that helps you put this thing back there again. Uh, so, sort of things that people don't sort of tell you. Uh, now I've just noticed on this one, there's a hole in this dust boot. And uh, that's probably contributing to the problems. So we'll have to see what condition this piston's in. Normally you can, you know, they're, you, you can reuse everything. And uh, you're, you're all right. You don't need any, any parts. But uh, I keep a stock of stuff for these, for doing this. That's how common this is. So we'll get a bit of lube juice on that. And what we're going to do, first of all, now, this is messy. I have this in a wooden bench, but you need a few rags and, uh, you know, prepare for a clean-up. So you can't do this at your in your kitchens or, or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just simply get this piston out by actuating the, uh, the, handbrake, cable, the handbrake cable here. And I'll push this piston out. Okay, there's the piston out rightly. Uh, look at that. So, we're going to need a new dust boot in this, but normally you can uh, reuse them. Obviously, if it's ripped, you're, you're sort of bait. So, you need to replace it. But I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you what you can, you can do about that. So, that's our piston more or less out. And there's the mess you make. I'll uh, we'll just get that cleared up a wee bit. Before we continue. Right, so this is half out anyway, so we'll just take the rest of it out. Right, just to, to tell you guys, I have to do this quite a lot. It would surprise you. Uh, how often I have to do I, I actually do this. So you see videos on the YouTube there of people changing brake pads and they just take them out, clean them up, stick them back in again. And uh, nearly all the time, you know, they just they just push the piston back in. But in the real world, the one that I live in, it just doesn't work like that sometimes, especially with these type of pistons or type of calibers, sorry. And uh, yeah, this is just a wee quick refurb. Now yeah, we're going to replace that. But normally, what you can do, you just clean that up, and I'll show you. I'll show you the reason why these things stick. And uh, people think it's the it's the piston. You know, obviously, if your piston's all corroded and pitted, and all, it's it's scrap. That there is dead on. It's perfectly reusable. You know, so that'll clean up the best. You know. Now the other thing as well. Uh, before somebody comments, you can buy that caliper reconditioned in a motor factors for about forty quid, and sometimes you you know you're giving the old one back uh, what they call surcharge or a, a deposit. Really, it is. So uh, whenever you take the old one off, you you, you give it you give it back in the same box, and uh, you know there's a a turnover of uh, refurbishing these, and all they do they they clean all that up. 
new sales, new piston, and uh, away you go again. That's probably the, the easiest. But if, uh, like myself, you go to change pads or you're going to do a wee, bit, a wee bit of work on the back end, this car here is actually in for something completely different. And uh, there's going to be a few videos in this car here. But uh, this is half an hour this takes to do. And uh, you get the thing working properly again. And uh, there's, there's no parts. Usually there's no parts required, but I'm going to change this. Okay, so in here is the seal. So this is uh, this is what they call, call the square seal. And the reason is, is because, well, it's square. It's not round like an O-ring, you know. It is round, but it's, uh, it's square shaped. So you pick that out gingerly with your pick tool, taking care not to scrape anything and all that there. So yeah, you take that out. N normally they're fine. Obviously if that's ripped or anything, it's, uh, it's not reusable. So you just give that a clean up. You just draw it through uh, a rag there with your, with your hands. And if it's gonna break, it's, it's scrap, so, but, this one here is fine. So, but that that normally isn't the problem. Uh, that that isn't what causes this thing, to, these pistons to stick. It's it's the dust seal that causes them to stick. So the dust seal resides. There's a wee groove in it there, and it resides in this wee groove here. That top groove. So what happens here, uh, guys, is this is aluminium, and Aluminium corrodes, creates this aluminium oxide, and you get all this muck and, and debris and white sort of powdery stuff in there, and that swells that out and jams the piston, and that's why the piston isn't free. So people think it's the seal and and all that. It's not. It's nothing to do with seal. So it's the it's that old dust boot, and uh, yeah, it's needed. But so you can see that the white corrosion in there. I think it doesn't look too bad. I thought it was worse. But so what we do is we just generally just clean that up. That first groove I'm quite I'm being quite quite aggressive with it. So this this dust dust boot groove doesn't seal the fluid. So it, it's just a dust boot. Keeps the, du the, the the dirt out of it and the water out of it. So uh, as you can see, whenever we took it out, it wasn't actually in right in very well, so it had pushed itself out, and uh, that just that just clamps the piston and and prevents it uh, from retracting back in again, and makes your you know your wheel not spin freely. So we give that a good old go on there, round with a pick tool, and that's all you really need to use. Uh, it's a small one of these small pick tools here, and uh, we we'll give all that a good scrape. And we'll just clean her up the best we can. Right, so we get a tin of uh, brake cleaner. Uh, this big tin here, you buy it at the motor factors for two quid. So we're going to use that quite a bit here. And we'll give it a scoot in. Now, whenever you do, you get all that debris out. It's inevitable that you're going to get some crap and muck in, in there. So you just give it a scoot out. Now, I have an hour line and... Uh, so a blow, a blower. So we're going to blow it out all the time. Now the other wee thing to note is now you can use a bit of this stuff. I have no problem putting that in to try and lube it up and you know help you get all the debris out. But that will swell the seal if you leave that in there. If you have that covered in WD forty, that'll that'll swell that. Okay, so. By all means, you can use this in the cleaning process, but the last thing you do is use brake clean, uh, give it a give it a, a blowout, and we do need to lube, put, use a bit of lubrication to get the to assemble this, but we're going to use silicone grease. Silicone based grease will not uh, will not make the, any any of the rubber components uh, swell, so uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, so you can use WD-40, uh, you know, for the clean up process, but as long as you don't sort of leave it like that, it's, 
it's fine. So we'll just keep uh, just keep going with that. Right, so the really tricky bit is, and this will make a lot of debris in here. You want to give this a, a, around here as much of a clean up as you can. So I have 60 grit, just a wee bit ripped off there. I'm, I'm going to get I'm going to get right in to the corners here as much as I can. Right round. And that'll, of course, make that full of muck. But that's okay. We'll, we'll clean all that out. Right, we're getting there. Sort of getting there, so I'll give that a good old scoot there. We'll probably use a ten of this. We're nearly doing this. Get most of that out. Right, okay, that's it cleaned up. No debris in her and uh, blew it within our line. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's as much as we're going to go with that part. So the next bit is we're going to dress this piston up a bit. Okay, that's us helping the vase. So you, do, you don't want to clamp this surface. So you're already clamping that outer bit. And uh, we'll just give her a bit of a, a go on with the rag here. And it's not really too bad, this piston. It's certainly reusable. So if this is if this is all pitted and rusty and all, it's kind of scrap. But normally this is this is what you get. So it's, there's a bit of markings there, and uh, so what we'll do there'll be a bit of fluid in there as well. So we'll get a bit of uh, 180 grit. And give that a light going over. Not too aggressive, and uh, give it a bit of a rub. Yeah, that's dead on. So while we're here, I like to do this, uh, protect it, and get a bit of uh, 60. Uh, rip a wee bit off, just bring it out there. And just go around this groove. So that can be it can be pretty rusty and uh, it, it can catch your you know your dust boot when you're going in so it's not actually too bad this one and if it's really bad on the on the face there you can give that a wee bit of a go on there just all around her that's the other one. so we'll have our square seal and We've cleaned it up, and we'll have our dust boot. But normally, now, if it's okay, you can you know give that a clean up just in the same fashion that we did. Turn her inside out and get all that muck out of it, especially in the, in that groove there. So, because this is nipped, I think this is the the main cause of our problem. That this uh, has tried to get out of its groove and has caused the the piston the the jam. But so I need to I need to replace this. So. It's no problem for me because I do this quite a bit. I actually keep these points. So you can see there I've marked on it there 38 mil. And there's a 41. That's a 38. So 38 and 41 are the common sizes. So you can get these. There's the, there's the, the seller. I got these on eBay. Uh, what's that say there? French tech? components and that's that's I've written that on that that's me so that I know just what's what and uh, 
All I'm going to use here, because I'm uh, a bit miserable on it, I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use that. And, uh, what are you getting this? There's a couple of caps. So, you get enough for, and you get a wee bit of grease. So this grease here is assembly grease. Red rubber grease for assembly of the brake and hydraulic. Right, so you, you can use that if you want. Uh, but I have my own stuff. So I'm gonna put that back in there. All I need today is this by here, which is lovely and clean for us. I'm gonna reuse that there because there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And uh, we'll put that to the side. Okay, so now we're in the assembly. Now this is this is the tricky bit. This this is the bit that I think it gets most people, and uh, they just go and buy an R caliber. So, okay, uh, I'm gonna get my hands wee clean first. Right, look at that. So, okay, I just keep checking this all the time. So I think just to make sure there's no nothing sticking to it. So we cover this in red silicone grease, and. Uh, There we go. Do not use petroleum based grease, or you can use the, those wee sachets that you get with these uh, suppliers, but that's what it is you're getting. And we'll put that in. Just, it's all with your fingers, with your fingertips. Now, <coughs> if that square seal is bad, it mightn't be ripped or whatever, but if it's not going to go in there and it's like, it's as if it's too big, you know, that means that it's it's stretched or, you know, it's it's starting to sort of melt or something. So, again, you can't use it. Nineteen, you know, nearly every time I do these, uh, that's reused. There's no orientation, you just put it in, it's a square, and that's why it's called a square seal. Now, this next bit, this is the tricky bit, and this is where you have to be a wee bit inventive. So uh, I have invented a tool for doing this, and you can make it yourself dead easy if you want to. So I'll uh, introduce you to it. That's it there. That's a bit of metal uh, formed around uh, a pipe. So this is a 38 mil piston. This is a universal tool. This will do any size because you can bend it in and out. And it's just that sort of sheet steel that you would use for welding up out rotten cars, you know. I can't remember what gauge it is. What would that be? 0.8 of a mil or something? So, uh, or one mil? I don't know. don't know what it is. But uh, we'll get that. That's been sitting around there. So I'm going to be... Uh, it's a bit sticky. So I'm going to be clean that up a wee bit. And uh, lubricate it. So essentially, anyway, what we're going to do... This piston is going to go in there like that. And that is going to hold this open for us. So we get that into the groove first. Bit of silicone grease to help us. And then we can crush this. Uh, crush this so that it's smaller. Like that. And then that'll go in. That'll go into that hole. And then we just expand it out. And uh, then the piston goes in. So, we'll get set up to do that, and I'll show you that in action. Right, we've a wee bit of preparation done. So there's our dust boot. Our wee tool is squeezed in. Now, if you're gonna cut this bit of metal, you know, you wanna give these edges a bit of a failure. You don't want any sort of points and all. Uh, so you don't want it to be sharp. You know, cut the fingers yourself, and obviously you, you may cut the, cut the boot as well. But, uh, that's it slid down, bit of silicone grease on her, just a smear, just to help things along. So this can be a wee bit fiddly, and I might be able to record all this. So there's silicone grease all around here. So what I need to what you need to do, what I do anyway, is you put this into the back side of it there. You know? So you get it you get it started in the back. And then you get your wee pick tool and you just knead her down in. So I'm maybe get a wee shot of that. Right, just just 
press her in all around. Right, so it looks like it's in, and I can just check. I can put my finger in and uh, just run around it. I can just check, make sure that it's it's in. It should go in, it should go in easy enough now with, with it all cleaned out, you know. So there's plenty of groove there to go in. So this is still folded together, so what we'll have to do is expand this out a bit. Okay, so expand that out a wee bit there. So we get a wee bit of our silicone grease onto our piston. Onto our piston here. And There we go. So we get our Wendy in tool and we just rotate around. So we get her about that far in there and we just pull our uh, are we too late? We'll wander in the rest of the way. Okay, sometimes uh, it didn't happen here, but sometimes you get a you, you know you get a bit of an air air trap in this rubber. And whenever you whenever you put it in, you might need to pick it up a wee bit, but uh, it didn't happen there because this is nice and greased up. It seems to have went in all right. Sometimes that balloons away up. So there you go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give that bleed nipple a little bit of a scoot and uh, take this wee cap off. Like so, bing, and uh, we'll, while, while this is off, loosen this up, so you can, because you, you, obviously you need to bleed it. Okay, a wee bit of WD-40 on the, on the bleed nipple, and again it's 11 mil. I like to use a socket on them, if you can get a socket on, so you have full purchase on the hex, calibers in the vice, just on, on one of the wee ears there, so... Uh, We'll see if this is going to come for us. Ah, there we go. Right, that not that doesn't ha usually happen. I can assure you. Uh, so have a wee impact boy out there. It does it. So we we'll just scoot this back and forward a few times before you put this caliper on the car. You need to make sure this this nipple is going to come for you. And. Uh, We'll just uh, scoot that back and forward, have it nice, nicely loosened up. Right, so after a bit of wiggling about there, we can actually... So you want that to be nice and loose. On the car, these nipples, these bleed nipples are in a, in a real bit of an awkward position. So uh, you need to have these so you can sort of nearly uh, open and close it with your hands. So, whenever you get this back on again, uh, clearly you have to bleed it. Uh, remove the reservoir cap. Uh, screw the this back on again. If there's any more old plastic uh, PVC in around that nipple there, it's just it's worthwhile actually just getting rid of it. There, if I can bring that back in the shot again. So it's worthwhile getting rid of any old bits of debris that's in around there. Try and make sure that holds nice and clear. Uh, you've got any muck on it, so we'll clean all that up. But that's well, it's, we could do a wee bit more. There's still a bit of debris in around here of uh, PVC. So this is this is steel pipe. Now I'm gonna actually clean this up a wee bit more. I think 
And uh, what we'll do then is whenever we get that bolted on, we'll get a wee dab of, uh, you know, hammerite or something. Bit of brake cleaner on it, make sure it's uh, there's no brake fluid or anything about it. And right at the, right at the end, whenever I fully assemble it all, I'll get a wee bit of, a wee bit of paint on that, a wee bit of black. We have a black hammerite or something like that, you know. So uh, that'll that'll protect that. The other wee thing to note uh, that I forgot to mention: those wee kits there that do two, uh, the the do both sides. So you have your square seals. You even get a wee uh, a wee bleed nipple cap on it there. But the main things it does cover that's that's usually the the thing that that goes in them because that's exposed. As in the case, as is, was the case here. So that there is on eBay for I think it's six quid, five ninety nine delivered. So you need to know your piston size. The common size is thirty eight and uh, forty one, but the common set, the very very common size. If it's not a you know a, a powerful Volkswagen, you know if it's got a bigger engine on a bigger caliber, a bigger piston. The, the Audis, the Audi A4s and A6s will have the 41mm piston. The, the majority of the Golfs and Passats and stuff will have the 38mm. So that, which does both sides, is 599 or 6 quid, as I said. And you get that on eBay. And I keep uh, a few of them for this sort of eventuality. I've already done the, the other side, and I didn't use any of those components at all. I, I reused the, the dust seal and... Uh, the block seal and I'm, I'm, I'm going to reuse the wee cap as well so there's nothing wrong with that so we're going to reuse that I think you know if that's missing then you use the one the wee ones out of the kit and I didn't use the, the grease that he supplied either but it's there for you if you need it so there you go I think that's uh, that's all I'm going to show you in this in this one uh, guys the key to assembly was this wee thing here which I have never seen anybody else doing that. Uh, this is purely my invention. I take full credit for this. So if anybody out there wants to patent this bit of metal that's uh, made into a circle uh, to, to assist the, the assembly of, of getting that piston in. So uh, yeah, I've used this loads and loads of times. It kicks about the bench, gets a wee bit dirty and I have to sort of clean it up before I use it. And uh, there you go. It just makes it makes it. It just goes together dead easy. So that's my invention. Take full credit, but it's now you know now now you know all about it yourself. So anyway, there you go. Installation versatile removal. Uh, blade the brakes. I, I'll just pull suck a bit of, a bit out with vacuum. Give them a few pumps. Make sure the reservoir caps off so that the fluid can flow through, and you're good to go. Uh, so that's it. Hope you get something out of this. Calibers dead on for another load of mails. So thanks for watching, as ever, and all the best, and bye bye.